Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and in today's After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating film grain, we're going to be creating film scratches, and we're going to be creating film detrius and debris that seem to typify uh, film, which is what people seem to think film looked like. I mean, sometimes it did when it degraded, but not always, but, but I guess if you want to try to get the point across, you have to go to extremes. So this is going to be covering all of those things. A little bit about framing, like this square frame, and then a little bit about the uh, jogging. So let's uh, get into it. This is the last tutorial of Lo-Fi July, which will complete all of the things you need to know to make your perfectly good footage look a little bit older and crappier. So I'm Evan Abrams. Let's uh, enjoy the tutorial. So inside of After Effects, the first thing you need to do is bring in the footage you intend to work on. Now. What I did for my example was I went into Premiere and then I copied elements on the timeline and then just made a new composition and pasted them. But for our purposes, I'm just going to import a video file and work on that. However you get the footage in is totally up to you. So once you have footage, create a new composition, make it whatever duration, ideally longer than your footage is going to be. And you're going to take your footage and you're going to put it into that comp. Now that comp we're going to name something like uh, Scratches export, export, whatever, just name it something so you know what it is. And then the footage, we're going to pre-compose that and we're going to call it footage. So any edits that you need to make or cuts or anything you need to make to your footage in here, then uh, you can do so in that comp. Out here in the scratches export though, we're going to be layering things on top of this that will then be exported. So I'm going to stick with this frame just because I look stupid. So the first thing I'm going to do is create that squared off frame for this thing because that's probably the quickest and easiest thing. So I'm just going to create a new solid. We're going to make it a black solid. I'm going to hit OK. And really all I did was I created a rounded rectangle. So what I'm going to do is just double click on this rounded rectangle picture here and then you go into rectangle path and change its size down to maybe 960 by 960, create a square, give it some roundness in the corners, maybe 100 roundness, and uh, that's about it. Then you go down to the black solid, set its track mat to be perhaps the alpha inverted of that layer. So then you just want to name them correctly, hitting enter and then typing in a new name. So this is frame, and then on this thing, I'm gonna call that uh, frame cover, so I know what's what. And then I can just take those, pre-compose those, and call this frame pre-comp. So if I want to go in and edit the frame, I can go into the pre-comp and edit that. So that looks pretty good. And I'm going to apply a fast blur just to the edges of this because it doesn't need to be perfectly good. So I'm going to go fast blur of five and repeat its edge pixels. So frame accomplished. Congratulations. It's going to change that to be a dark green perhaps, and it goes above this. So the next thing we want to make are the scratches and grain elements. I'm going to create a new solid, and uh, black solid works for me. I'm going to rename this layer uh, grain, and this is the layer on which we're going to put all that fun little film grain. So in order to make that, it's pretty simple. We just go to the fractal noise, pull out some fractal noise, which by default looks like this cloud. And it's not really very impressive until we start to adjust the contrast up. Let's go as high as about 640, I think. Uh, 640 should be good. You want to make it much more contrasty so there are fewer of these gray areas. And then you want to take the brightness, and depending on which method you want to do, we're going to go either up or down. I'm going to go down to negative 300. So there are only a few of these scratches out and about. And if you want more scratches, then, you know, closer to zero, fewer scratches, closer to negative 300. And then if you want to do something like even increase the contrast even more, I'd recommend you use a curves because you can really be playing around with the brightness and contrast available within the effect for a long time without getting very far. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to punch the curve up just a little bit so that these all appear a little bit brighter. So that's good, and we want the grain to be moving on every frame. So we go down here to the evolution options, we alt click on random seed, and then we type in random, and then a couple of brackets, 
times 100 to generate a random number between 0 and 1. Multiply that by 100 and that'll create a new random seed which is basically a new set of random values and then it starts throwing this stuff everywhere. So, so far so good on the grain. That's looking good. And now we want to create the scratch lines. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to create a line. Just grab the pen tool, selecting no layers. Draw a line from the top to the bottom of this thing. We're going to give it a fill of nothing and we're going to give it a stroke that is white and a stroke width of 10 should be sufficient. So these lines will form the basis of the, the scratches that we're going to create. So you can make vertical scratches, horizontal scratches, and you'll see why all of that is not important at this stage because we go into the shape and the path, we are happy with the path. In fact, I would like it to be actually closer to the actual center of this thing just for control because I'm a bit of a control freak. And now we're done messing around with the path. The next thing we want to mess around with is the stroke, in particular the stroke width. We'd like it to get thicker and thinner and go all over the place, so we're going to set it to start at 10, and then we're going to add an expression, holding down Alt, and then clicking on the stopwatch, and we're going to say wiggle, so you're going to change this value, and then inside the brackets, how often? It's going to be 6, and you're going to wiggle 10. In fact, the 10 is linked to whatever this width is. So you can just go ahead and link those two together just because of the way expressions tend to work. So if you go creating a thicker line, you think, hmm, I'd like, a, I'd like this to be thicker, then you can just go ahead and you can type in a larger value and then it will be also altering the stroke by that value on every frame. So that's just something to consider. So I'm going to leave it at 10. And that's just a way of dynamically linking these things together so you can easily change the thickness of these lines. And the next thing I want to alter is I want to give it a variable width all the way across or a variable, you know, not a straight line, but I don't want to redraw this line all the time. So I'm going to add what's called a wiggle paths to this. And this, as you can see, causes the path to get a little bit wiggly. So in the wiggle path, I'm going to put an expression on the size and the detail, and I'm going to go wiggle that size. I want you to change what your size is six times, and I want you to alter it by a factor of 10. And then we're going to copy that. I'm going to paste it on the detail as well, which means that not only is the wiggle path generating something new, you know, in this case it says two times a second, but I'd actually like to amp that up to 24 times a second, so it's happening every frame, or whatever your frame rate is. You want this to just be happening every frame. It's also going to be altering the size and the detail of that change on every frame. So it's getting thicker, thinner, it's wiggling around, it's weird, it's good. So that is pretty good. Now the next thing we need to do is alter its position because we don't want it to always be in the same position. So hold down Alt and give another wiggle expression to this. And uh, we're going to explore one of the tiny nuances of the wiggle expression, which is when you apply it to something that is an, of an array size 2, meaning it has one value and then another value, any wiggle is going to apply to both. We don't want this to be going up and down, though. We only want it going left and right. So the first thing we're going to do is sort of start at the end. We're going to say, this is going to be displayed as x comma y and we're going to say x will equal something and we're going to say y will equal something and the things they're going to equal in the case of the x which is at this point uh, 960 telling it which way left and right to be we're going to have it wiggle and then it's going to wiggle 24 times a second comma maybe 250 is enough and then at the end of this, we need to tell it to use only one part of that wiggle because any wiggle applied to this particular value is going to generate an array. We don't want the array, so we put in square brackets a zero and then finish that line with a semicolon. And then the Y, we are really only interested in it displaying the Y position that it is there. So just position and then in square brackets a one and semicolon to end that out. And you're going to want to make sure that you spell things correctly, which is really difficult for me. 
position. How's that? Okay, good. So now as you can see, it is tracking back and forth quite a bit. It is all over the place. And we're going to want a similar expression uh, on the rotation. So we'll have it wiggle, have it wiggle 24 times a second, and then uh, maybe something like just one, because it doesn't need to be that extreme. So this thing's all over the place and it's pretty good. Now we don't want this line to be on here all the time. We want it to kind of come and go. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a strobe, strobe light to it, which can be used for many things, but in this case we can say operates on making the layer transparent so that every so often it's going to make the layer just turn off. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the strobe durations per second uh, change. So we're going to put an expression on this. So it's going to be different and it's going to be wiggle 24 times second uh, a whole one. So I hit return on that. And now what you get is something that comes and goes and fades and is pretty good. So we've got the strobe light. We would also like a rough and edges on this thing to alter up the edge a little bit to make it a little bit choppier. And that's pretty much all you need. And from there, everything else that you want to apply to it is going to be just a variation on those things. And if you want to create more and have them go in different directions, then you know that's totally up to you as well. But uh, just remember that all of the variables that you put in, for example, on that strobe light, giving this a higher or lower number is going to make it appear less or more. So that's good. If you want more of them, just uh, duplicate that and it'll create multiple instances of it and make even right up to three. And the reason that we went and wanted to position it right in the center is it makes it easier to change its overall position, you know, somewhere within this frame. So just do that, put it over a little bit at the side. Then we're going to take all of these layers, the grain, these shapes, whatever, and we're going to pre-compose them. And we're going to call this grain and scratches. Hit OK on that. And then we're going to change its blending mode here to be either add, if you would like these to be white and white scratches uh, over your footage, which is okay. I mean, if that's what you're into and make sure you put it below the frame comp. Or if you would like this to be instead dark, you should go and invert this comp and then you will change it from being an add to being something like a multiply and then you have these dark scratches on your thing. So that's pretty good and you can apply something like that fast blur again to this if you find you know these images are just a bit too sharp so go ahead and do that and uh, that's pretty good. Now you've got some dust and scratches coming on and we are so far so good. So last but not least we want to apply a new adjustment layer because we want to do that fancy jogging up and down thing that I did and I do that by using the offset when applied to an adjustment layer begins to offset everything beneath it and can really quickly fake out uh, the idea of having a scrolling uh, film strip going by. So I'm just reset this to 540 and just like we did before with the separating the wiggle, we want to do that again. But uh, instead, what we're going to do is on this offset, we are going to uh, separate out the values by making the end be value plus and then an array x comma y. And then we just have to set up what those x and y values will be. So we've got x equals then something in a semicolon. So x is this 960 left and right, so it doesn't need to be anything, it can be 0. And then y is going to equal a random number, and then you know between some brackets we're going to say what that random number is from one value to another value, and that should be good enough. So we hit return, and now we need to set up what that random value is. So I'm going to create a slider control, put that on the adjustment layer, and the random value we would like to be from slider control comma to negative slider control. So that means it's going to create a random number that's between, in this case, 0 and negative 0. Or if I put this at 100, it'll be between 100 and negative 100. 
which means that it will add, by which I mean subtract negative 100 from the value or whatever. So it will move around plus or minus this number. So, for example, if you wanted to have this thing jostle and then come to a standstill, we could go 1080 with this value, set the keyframe here, go ahead maybe 20 frames, and then set it down to be 0, or maybe just 5 so that it's lightly jogging along. So then you can see when you preview it that it starts out really shaky and then settles itself down, so that's the kind of look that we are going for. So that's your motion, your frame, your dust and scratches, and then we need a final adjustment layer here, new adjustment layer. And this is to do your color correcting, as we've done before when we make that tint sandwich. So, you know, we tint this down 25 off the get-go. We give it a curves as well, and that curves we use to make this brighter and then a little bit darker, and then and we go to the red and then we screw up those values and then we go to the blue and then we plateau those values and it just looks quite wonderful and then we go here into the tint bring out a second tint cap it off at 50 and i'm feeling pretty much good to go uh, somebody brought up on the last tutorial that they wanted a vignette so i guess we'll make one of those two so we can make a new solid make it a black solid we're going to be putting this just below the frame, we're going to be using a circle to generate this thing. So there we have a circle, we need the circle to be black. We need it to be an inverted circle. We'd like the radius to be 960, and then we would like to feather that out. Beep. Feather, 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 feather. Feather can be something like 540, I suppose, and then you know, you can pinch that in or whatever, but uh, that's it. That's a circle-generated vignette. Hopefully you enjoy that. Everyone who brought it up last time. I don't believe you always need to use vignettes, you know, just personally, because uh, here I am scratching my eye. It looks kind of like I'm picking my nose, but uh, I'm glad I edited that out of the final thing. But uh, anyway, here's my stern face looking at you, and... Uh, I guess that's a good spot for the tutorial to end. So this has been how to create this kind of film frame with the dust and the scratches and the hibbity and the hobbity. And hopefully this has shown you how to really just get that extra Instagramming into your footage. And it also ends lo-fi July. So uh, starting in August, we're going to be looking at some more interesting stuff. But uh, new tutorials every week here on uh, the C. Abrams channel, if you're not watching these chronologically as they go up live, then this sentence means nothing to you because uh, you already know there's new stuff here every week and you know it's awesome and you should subscribe. So if you enjoy talking about VFX and motion graphics and After Effects, then this is the place for you. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, follow me on Twitter at EC Abrams. If you have questions about this tutorial, leave them in the comments. Get involved on our Facebook page and see some of the inspiring things that we post up there and to get into the discussion. I really appreciate all the support and I'm glad you guys are getting something out of the tutorials and hopefully these help you out in your career or your hobby or whatever you're doing. Anyway, have a nice day and I will see you around the internet.